So this morning we're going to do a fairly simple and iconic kind of recursion exercise. Here we've got some model lines that are uh, made into a rectangular recursion and it's something that we're going to be able to just adjust how this recursion behaves, how these nested rectangles rotate against each other. And it just takes a couple minutes to set up this kind of file. And you can do this in either Vasari or Revit, pretty much the same practice for either. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do a new family. And we're going to choose an adaptive component. And the first thing we're going to do is draw ourselves a rectangle to basically be our base rectangle. So I'm going to go model line. I'm going to make sure that 3D snapping's on. And I can just throw these down pretty much any old place. And forget about that. <coughs> like that. There I've got my rectangle. I'm going to make my points adaptive. And I'm going to put onto them four points that are basically going to drive the nesting behavior. Like that. And each one of these guys is going to get the same parameter. And I'm just going to give it a dumb name like P1. And uh, I'll give it an instance parameter. You can do type or instance for this, but I'll just do instance for now. So now you can see that each one of these guys moves around to the other ones, and that's moving around at a percentage along the line, essentially. You can see that over here in the properties that it's a, uh, for the family types. You can see that it's a 0 to 1 value. And now I'm going to make my family not shared so you can see I'm going up here to the family categories and parameters and unclicking shared. And uh, I won't get into too much about how that works, but trust me. And um, that's actually pretty much it for the modeling portion of this, surprisingly enough. Now if I go save, I'm just going to give this, uh, we'll call it recursion 1. And now here's the trick, is I'm just going to make another one that's called Yes, you can guess it. Recursion 2. And save that. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to go back and I'm going to open Recursion 1 again. So now I've got two files. Recursion 2 and Recursion 1. I'm going to load Recursion 1 into Recursion 2. And I'm just going to place it on those other points that I made. Like so. And then I'm going to take the instance parameters of this loaded family and I'm going to map them to the one that it's nested in. So P1 for my nested family is going to get assigned to P1 of my host family. And now I'm going to take this, we're in uh, recursion 2, and I'm going to load it back into recursion 1. You can see now I've got my basic setup of recursion. So if I go one, two, three, four, and I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm only going to do it one more time, and then I don't have to bother anymore. So I'm going to go P1. And now I can just start loading back and forth and back and forth to create my recursion. So I'm going to load into project, overwrite. I'm going to see another layer. And I'm going to load back into project, overwrite takes a little bit longer. I'll do it one more time. And now we see our recursive behavior happening. Now, big deal. It looks pretty static, right? Well, I can go in and because I mapped all these parameters to each other, I can start doing this sort of thing where I adjust the placement along this line and it percolates down through all of these guys. And I can start stretching this thing out and seeing what other kind of geometry I can make. You know, everything moves with each other. And then say, well, you know what, I'd like to really have this do a couple more uh, layers of recursion. So I'm going to load it back into the other one. I'm going to see a couple more varieties pop up down here. And again, I can flex and move this one around. And that's all it is to create this kind of recursive behavior. And uh, thanks again to Stephen Register for showing me this method.